Have we started brewing? Yes. Have we stopped brewing? No. Welcome to Brewathon! So this is my little lesson on yeast washing or at least yeast collecting. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on this, trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, one of the things that most of the forums say is that you, know, you transfer everything, swash it up, uh, and then take that and put it into a, a jug uh, or something, um, shake it all up and let it set, let it settle out. Um, that works fine. Um, I'm trying to take it one step farther and make it as easy as possible for myself. The caveat is I could be doing everything wrong, uh, but so far the yeast that I have used has been viable at least in the yeast starters that I have done. So the first thing obviously to do uh, is transfer, um, get rid of your wort, and get down to your yeast cake, right? So this is the boring part. I have the most sanitary basement in town from all the stars in. Don't worry about that. So I found this works a little bit better as far as transferring out. <coughs> I also very much like the uh, high volume or larger auto siphon. I was just going to say that half inch ID hose does not wait around. Yeah, I do not like to do anything slow. So it's the, uh, what a lot of people will do from what I've read is they'll take either most or all of what's in here, they'll put it into a big thing, shake it up, put it in the fridge, let it settle out, and then take the liquid part and then pour it into these and then shake it up and let it settle out. I'm trying to just avoid all of that work. The only downside that I can potentially see is, well, the fact that I'm not paying attention. <coughs> the only downside I can potentially see is san uh, sanitization. Um, what I'm going to do here in a second once I get done is, is actually take this, I'm going to turn it on its side, and then let everything settle out for an hour or two. What that does is basically get me those layers inside the carboy, and it makes it very easy to pour out the wort, collect the yeast, and then leave the, the hops and the, uh, the dead yeast behind. So that you only collect what you Is need. the yeast properly layered now in the bottom of that carboy? Um, somewhat. I mean, I, you probably could collect some of it, but it's all, I mean, especially at the time you, you know, agitate it, side, 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 side okay. and out and everything. And then you do it on the side just so it's easier to pour. So it's, yeah, it's much easier to pour. So like what um, I have seen some people say is that you, know, you can do this also in the carboy, but everybody I've seen has been just leaving the carboy setting up. Um, the one thing that I have also read is that uh, you want boiled water. What this will allow you to do uh, is when you boil it, all the oxygen comes out. So if the oxygen is out of the water, it will t especially if the yeast is refrigerated, it will tend to put the yeast to sleep. That way the yeast aren't all active while they're in the, 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 uh, the pint jars. So once I have about, you know, get all the way down to the bottom, um, I boiled this, cooled it down, to, uh, to room temperature, so you don't obviously don't want to put more than water on top of your yeast. And probably just about maybe a quart, if that. You just want enough so that um, it allows the yeast to, you know, to rise a little bit, allows the hops to settle out. So I just take this and shake it up really good. Take that, and then usually what I'll do is just put some foil on top of it, and then lay it, on, lay it on its side for a couple of hours. Once you do that, if you look carefully here, what you'll see is that I've got a layer of hops at the bottom, right, some whiter stuff, which is the dead yeast, and then on top of that is the live yeast. <coughs> um, so I've got some just some mason jars, pint jars. Um, you can boil these in the water to sanitize them. I've read that. Uh, I just use star sand. Um, seems to be easier. I tried to boil them and it was a pain in the butt. Uh, so then what you want is some sort of 
bucket or something so that you can collect the wort or the water that's on the top and then be ready with your pint jars to collect the yeast. The trick is to do it slowly so that nothing gets all mixed up again. We also found that with the lighter beers, you can see the striation a lot better and you can actually see the yeast. And my darker beers, the yeast is kind of just all mixed in. So now that this is settled out, you can just very carefully pour out the wort. And because I don't use a whole lot of water, there's really not that much to pour out. So I'm just going to just do the very start of it. You can see that's very, very clear. And the second here, that's going to get a little bit darker than this one. around and separate again. You can see there I'm starting to get some of the hops and some of the trog. Depending on how much water you use, you can probably get up to three of these. Uh, I'm just going to stop there because I don't need that much yeast. <coughs> but you can see the difference between the two here. This is very clear. This has a little bit more water. Um, this has probably more yeast but also more hops. So once this settles out, all right, this is what you end up with. And then take that and make your yeast starter. Uh, make sure that you've actually got viable yeast and then use that to uh, pitch in your beer. And when uh, you do that, you just decant the liquid off the top. You don't stir that up, you just pour it out. I, I, what I've been doing is just letting all this settle out and then I just pour the liquid and just a little bit of the, the trough because you might have some hops that have settled out, sorry, not hops, yeast that have settled out to the bottom there. Uh, but just pour that in your starter. I've been using, you know, like one liter starter, so you know, you take you know, three, three fourths of a liter, pour this in, uh, and let it go. Um, all this will settle out. So, you know, th what this looks like now, take that, cap it, put it in the fridge, and in about three or four hours, you know, something looks like that. Um, so, that's what I've been doing so far. It's it's been working. Um, there's probably there is more yeast in here. If you really wanted to, I could put more water in here, capture more yeast, uh, but given that I'm brewing several different types of beer at once, I'm dealing with four or five different strains of yeast, I don't want 27 little mason jars sitting around. Um, so there's probably some bad thing that I'm doing here, uh, but if there is so far, I haven't found it. Um, so this prevents the washing, so you don't have to continually shake it up, wait for it to settle out for it. Um, I've read some forums from people that said that say they wash their beer like this much as two or three times. Uh, so if you're like going from a dark beer to a light beer and trying to reuse the yeast, maybe that's necessary. For the most part, you want to pitch um, higher gravities anyway, so you're probably going to a darker beer. Um, and so far, it's definitely it's to work. So the only trick is laying this on its side and obviously trying to be as careful as you can with sanitation. That was awesome. That was oh, great. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have to brew again. <laughs> I was looking at all the washing and I was shaking it up and doing everything, and I'm like, it works. For, for six bucks, I, 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 I don't want to stand here and do this all night. <laughs> so, it works. I mean, it no, works. No, it no, it's price points. I usually do it sit down. <laughs> it's a shame. Try it. <laughs> Change your life. <laughs>